I'd like to dedicate this speech to my grandpa, Hans, who's in the audience right now. <laughs> my grandfather, Hans, was born in Germany during the early stages of Nazi rule. When he was eight years old, his father, Siegfried, changed jobs and moved the family to Vreshnia in German-occupied Poland. As the area was rural, they lived there in relative peace until 1945, and my grandfather recalls these as happy times. In January of 1945, wearing multiple layers of clothing and clutching the few personal belongings he could, Hans, with his younger siblings and his mother, said goodbye to their father, Siegfried, for the last time. They hurried to the train station where a small train was waiting. It was one of the most brutal winters of the Second World War. The Russians were defeating the German army in Poland, and the women and children in my grandfather's town were fleeing to escape communist rule. The men were ordered to stay to defend the town. The Russian tanks and troops reached Vreshnia the next day. It quickly became apparent that any defense of the town was hopeless, and the mayor allowed the men to leave that same evening. Siegfried and a couple of others who had missed the train secured a horse and a cart and set off on a perilous journey in the direction of Germany. They avoided the city of Poznan where they had heard Russian tanks were headed. After three days journey, they came upon a small farmhouse where the owner had already fled and only two Polish workers remained. The Polish generously gave what they could to provide food and shelter from the cold. During the night, Siegfried went to the kitchen table and started hallucinating. He was found dead in the morning, most likely suffering an internal hemorrhage. In order to protect the Polish people who would help them, the group continued in the early morning, leaving Siegfried's body in the snow near a small bridge. Sadly, the Russians caught up with the group two days later, and the men in the group were killed. When Hans and his siblings reached Berlin, his mother wanted to stay to wait for word from Siegfried. But at a young age of 12, Hans had to tell his mother that it would be far safer to move on to Western Germany, where the rest of the family was, and to abandon the hope of reuniting with their father for now. News of Siegfried's death did not come until many months later. I had the chance to visit these villages and woods 68 years later with my grandfather Hans and see where my great-grandfather Siegfried died trying to escape from the terrors of war. We drove down the same roads that they traveled in 1945. The small farmhouse that the group had found shelter in was gone and had re replaced by a newer building. The cemetery that Siegfried was eventually buried in was overgrown and unrecognizable from the road. To find it, we had to ask the locals. The tombstones were crumbling, and the chapel had neither roof nor door. For me, it was a truly life-changing experience to physically visit these places that had been the backdrop of my ancestors' last few days. Robert A. Heinlein once said, those who forget their past are destined to repeat it. We have arrived at this present moment by building on what has been done before us. The sacrifices made by our predecessors have allowed us to live better than they ever could. Because of the resilience and bravery of my ancestors, I am able to be here now. We need to honor and remember what happened in the past and learn from their experiences so we can shape a better future. <laughs>